You're watching the new killer series. In today's video, we're going to overview the Jeepers Creepers license, what Behavior Interactive would have to do to bring the Creeper into DBD, and the reason Behavior hasn't taken these steps. There's a lot of controversy surrounding the Creeper license. How's it going, everyone? My name is Schmuckles. We made it to the Jeepers Creepers video. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and share this video if you want the Creeper in DBD, because I actually found a path that could make the Creeper eligible to come into DBD despite all the controversy. Stick around to the end of the video if you want to know more about this, and let me know in the comments below if you think it'd be okay for behavior to bring the creeper in but you have to watch this video until the end to get the whole story something very special has happened with this license i also stream on twitch on wednesday and sunday nights the link is in the description below a giant portion of the dbd fan base wants jeepers creepers as a killer in dbd i found a ton of forums and creeper concepts out there describing a killer power and special ability they want the creeper to have the ability to fly or to jump across the map flying is a very complicated idea to bring into dbd still other than the controversy, this killer seems like a perfect addition to DBD and the power could be developed to be very different from the other killers that are already in the game. The original Jeepers Creepers was released in August of 2001, directed by Victor Salva, produced by Francis Ford Coppola's company American Zoetrope, and distributed by United Artists and MGM. United Artists is actually a sub-company of MGM. This film had a budget of $10 million and saw $59 million in box office revenue. The film's success led to two more films, Jeepers Creepers 2 in 2003 and Jeepers Creepers 3 in 2017. The fourth installment, Jeepers Creepers Reborn, is also in post-production right now. There's a ton of controversy surrounding these films and the director of films 1 through 3, Victor Salva, because he's a registered sex offender. In 1988, he was convicted for sexually abusing a 12-year-old actor who starred in his feature film debut, Clown House, which was released in 1989. He five-letter R-worded 12-year-old Nathan Forrest Winters during the production of Clown House and refused to let Winters' mother on set, who was suspicious something was going on. Started talking about Mowgli's loincloth and um, so that he could make me one. So he got two bandanas and tied them together and made this loincloth and as he's tying them he's like fondling me and um, and that's like my first memory of when the abuse started and you know eventually it progressed. You told me that I wouldn't be able to see him anymore and that I wouldn't be able to act anymore and um, so that's really you know was my motivation because I, I I've always been very pretty try to be pretty honest even as a kid you know and i have a very hard time lying to my mom and so when she kept asking me it was like almost a physical pain to lie to her nathan then finally admitted to his mom that he had a secret and told her everything so by that point he'd been you know getting away with this for a long time and he's very very comfortable and almost you know almost cocky about it within a couple days after shooting wrapping up the shoot um photography for it that I told her, you know, I have a secret that I want to tell you, and I just told her. Police raided the director and former child care worker's home, where they found child pornography, including a homemade pornographic tape that showed Salva engaging in oral sex with his pre-adolescent star. In 1988, Salva pleaded guilty to five felony counts and was sentenced to three years in prison. He actually never saw the initial box office release of Clown House. He was in prison. He was released in 1989 after serving only 15 months. Salva's directing career in Hollywood went on as if nothing happened. He's been coddled completely by um, certain members of Hollywood. And I don't, I don't know, it just seems like there's like an exclusive club and Victor's a part of that club. In 1999, Salva said, I think saying he'll never work again was all for show. My God, if they were to take the arrest records of every filmmaker or actor, they'd have to shut down this town. Let's face it, anybody can work here who makes money. Salva went on to work with Francis Ford Coppola and create all three of the Jeepers Creepers after all of this happened. The third Jeepers Creepers was nearly canceled because the continued employment of Victor Salva triggered a lot of people. If Behavior were to license the Creeper, they'd have to pay MGM and Victor Salva. Metro Goldwyn Mayer owns the copyright licenses to Jeepers Creepers one through three. On a lot of forums I read, people said that Behavior has openly admitted they don't want to pursue this license because it'd be supporting a sex offender. I saw mixed things about the statement that had been made from Not Queen. Not Queen is the lead community manager on Dead by Daylight at Behavior Interactive. She apparently made a statement on stream and there was a written statement too, but I couldn't find the footage anywhere. On one of the forums about Jeepers Creepers, I found a reply from Not Queen. She said, this is not a license we are looking into. This was back in June of 2018. I posted a video a while back about every
every licensed killer on Behavior's radar, and the Creeper was nowhere on Behavior's list. But here's where it gets interesting. In the official release statement on the newest Jeepers Creepers Reborn, there's no mention of Salva, nor is he listed as a producer, both of which would suggest that he's not involved with the production, and it's most likely that the studio is attempting to distance themselves from the director and his revolting past. On February 24th, 2021, Screen Media Films announced they bought out the worldwide rights to Jeepers Creepers 4 Reborn, so MGM owns the first three movies and Screen Media Films owns the fourth. Victor Salva isn't involved with this project. I felt skeptical about this. Even though Victor's name isn't on the fourth film, I wondered whether or not he would financially benefit from this film in any way. We've seen this in the Friday the 13th franchise. Remember, the original writer Victor Miller stands to benefit from all of the sequels even though he only wrote the original Friday the 13th. After researching this, I actually found our answer in a tweet. Dino Reviews asked, will Victor Salva benefit in any way from the release of this movie? Will filmmakers make changes to the Creeper to distance him from Salva's version maybe? I think this is a huge issue that needs to be commented on before anyone is willing to give the movie a shot. To which Timo Viewer and Solo replied, Salva is in no way associated with this production and is not benefiting from it in any way. The Creeper and the script are completely new creations. Timo Viewer and Solo is the director of the newest film, so if Behavior were to license the Creeper from Jeepers Creepers 4, which comes out this fall, it will in no way be benefiting Victor Salva. Given this, do you think it'd be okay for Behavior to bring this version of the Creeper into DVD? Let me know in the comments below. On October 26, 2017, Behavior brought in the Nightmare DLC, which included Freddy Krueger and Quentin Smith. These characters were not the original A Nightmare on Elm Street. They were licensed from their reboot in 2010. So Behavior has licensed killers from sequels before. The Freddy Krueger in DVD visually looks a lot more like the reboot Freddy when comparing the reboot Freddy and the original Freddy. If the Creeper were to come into DVD, this would mean he would look like a version of the Creeper we actually haven't even seen yet. So this is what we're faced with. There's kind of two ways to look at it. The first way is that Screen Media Films is working hard to continue the franchise without the involvement of Victor. This could be a marketing decision for them to get more fans back and or they might be taking a stance against Victor. His name is off the project and he won't be compensated any further. So some people might think supporting Jeepers Creepers Reborn is a good way to support the franchise and not Victor. That's the path Behavior would have to take to not support him and bring the Creeper into DVD. The second way to look at it is that Screen Media Films paid MGM and Victor a ton of money in advance to get the license rights and therefore is supporting Victor, at least financially, as well as the franchise. So giving this company any money for licensing or just watching the fourth movie is still indirectly supporting Victor. It's at least supporting the company that paid Victor. So you'd be supporting a company that supported a sex offender. Continuing this franchise will also likely help Victor's career and image since he built the franchise. It could also encourage people to look away or forget his past. Some people might think that Victor already profited from the fourth movie, he just got all the money in advance. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and share this video to spread this idea. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.